when I take my energy back from the belief, I retrieve my energy from the belief that I don't have enough money to do this, then I feel relief and I go do it. Or I take my energy back from the belief that I can't market my book. I would be pushing it on somebody or selling it to somebody. And that's terrible. There's a belief that selling is terrible. If I take my energy back from that belief, then I can do it. Hello, and welcome to the Write the Book Inside You podcast. Tips, tools, and interviews for coaches and healers like you who want to write a nonfiction book to boost your visibility, clients, and cash flow while making a difference. I'm your host, Carol Westmore a multi-published author and energy psychology tapping book coach. Now let's jump into today's episode. Today, I'm honored to introduce you to my guest, Dr. Laurie Weiss, a psychotherapist, coach and author who in her 45-year career has helped more than 60,000 individuals reclaim life energy and the joy of living. Author of 13 books, her goal is to make complex information accessible to her readers and anyone who wants to share her wisdom, especially when it comes to reducing worry and stress and expanding into your prosperity. Welcome, Dr. Laurie. Hi. So give us the 30,000-foot view of where you are today in relation to your work and the tool you are going to share today to help writers and creatives with their inner game. Where I am today is pretty much retired from seeing clients. I am in my 80s, and what I've been doing for a long time is trying to impact people when I'm not there, which is what happened with my very first book that that hooked me on writing. It was like somebody called me up and left a message on my machine. Thank you for changing my life. And I was totally hooked. What I'm doing now is letting people know about the tools that I know about through the books that I've written. Oh, I began my career as a grade school teacher. I kept learning things. I kept, I stumbled across transactional analysis because my husband was a psychology student. I thought you can use that in the classroom, trying to figure out how to use it in the classroom. And I discovered that people were only training in clinical work. I started doing clinical work and all of a sudden I thought I was learning to use it in the classroom. And my instructor said, are you ready to take your certification exams? And I went, what? So I did. And I became a psychotherapist and worked in the field of transactional analysis and then got into the field of adult children and recovery, inner child work. But then somebody pointed out that all of my clients were adult children of alcoholics and John Bradshaw was talking about it. So I got involved with him. I just interrupt. I, I believe you were a marriage gu- a guidance counselor. <laughs> One of my specialties was women. Then from women, I started getting into marriage counseling. I was all set to write, to elaborate on a book that I wrote about business and transactional analysis. Uh, Instead of writing about business, all of the things I'd been telling my couples were in my head and they were just there and I couldn't do anything else. So I sat down and I started pouring out everything that was in my head about the things that I told couples. Started writing with a team. This is a a whole new technique that I had learned in the coaching field about how to get team feedback on what to do. So I started doing that. And then I wrote a book about couples and then wrote more books about couples and kept seeing couples. Then I encountered logosynthesis when I was ready to retire 11 years ago. I was 70 years old. I figured enough was enough. Then I got fascinated by that. We're going to go into what is logosynthesis, but Tell us about your aha moment on a street outside a restaurant. That's a great story. Oh, yes. Being a transactional analyst took me all over the world. I got to talk and be at lots of conferences. And I had these really good friends who were likewise specialists in Montreal, hadn't seen them in a long time, wanted to go out to dinner. And they wanted to go out to a Mexican restaurant. I don't particularly care for the food. Families started to come in and kids started to make a lot of noise. Then mariachis came in with their trumpets. 
So it was not quiet at all. And I'm hypersensitive to spicy food. And they kept telling me, this isn't too spicy. And, you know, you can eat this. And I would eat it. I would take a bite and it would burn my mouth. And I'd send it back to the kitchen. And I was sending my food back and not eating. And so there's the noise and there's the terrible food for me. I am getting more and more and more tense. And so while they were paying the bill, I went out to the parking lot. I did tamping, which some people know, deep breathing like that. And I calmed down. I thought I was fine. And then my friend, who was a psychiatrist, came out and he said, what happened? And I told him, he said, are you OK? I said, yes, because I thought I was. I felt fine. And he said, will you say these words with me? trusted him. I'd known him for 40 years. So I said, sure. I said some words that I didn't understand following what he told me to do. I experienced this incredibly profound relaxation. Amazing. I I couldn't believe it. I said, is this what you were talking about six months ago that I totally dismissed because it was so silly? He said, yeah. All right. I guess I have to learn it. So I did. That, That was my introduction. It was like, I didn't believe in it didn't make any sense at all to me. So so what, let's introduce the listeners to this word, logosynthesis, which is the, the tool you're going to share, which could help writers, I believe. Let's tell us what the word is and where its origin is, and then how you apply it to stress, anxiety, and possibly writer's block. The word is an amalgamation. It's logo, which means word in Greek, and synthesis, putting things together. I'll tell you a personal story about how I did it first, and then I'll go on, because I had a very, very busy year one year. I also had an agreement to get a book manuscript turned in by a certain time, and I had done a lot of research. Everything was outlined. I was ready to go, and I had one month turn out a 30,000-word book manuscript, first first draft. What I did, and, and it worked. I mean, it worked. I had a full schedule full therapy, um, coaching. What I did was every time I sat down, I said the special words, the three magic sentences that you know about and that I've been using. And I wrote, there was nothing in the way. And so where before I might've dithered about, you know, what am I going to do? How am I going to do it? All the voices, all the chatter that we have in our heads, there wasn't any. I just sat down and wrote in the time that I had, which was very limited. All the words came out. I turned it in. Very little editing was needed. I was great. So that an insight for the writers listening. So we'll focus on logosynthesis, how it helped you in, in this particular case. What was it actually those magic sentences doing? Nobody really knows exactly what they do. The focus on logosynthesis as a, as a therapist, psychotherapist, as a coach, a consultant, as a writer, I focus on stories. I really want to know what the story is. And I've been trained to focus on stories and interpret stories and figure stories out. Love stories. People love stories. But logosynthesis is different. It focuses on energy rather than stories. And the energy that it can be stuck, stories have something to do with how energy is stuck. Because whenever we encounter something that's too much for our resources at the moment, we tend to take that whole experience and kind of put it aside, freeze it so that we don't have to deal with it so that we can go on. You know, you've heard people say, I just can't deal with that right now. And they compartmentalize it, which is fine, useful if you take it out again and unpack it and work it. But if you don't, then it just stays there. And since we are all energetic beings connected to source of whatever essence, whatever you want to call it, we all have we all have a little voice inside that we know tells us the truth. So it's a question of learning to get the energy flowing again because we get the energy stuck. It's like this. And all of our stuck energy is like, oh, if if it's between me and a, and the sun, everything that I've got is blocking out the sun in some way, blocking out my source of energy. When I dissolve those blocks. My energy flows freely and I can use it to solve whatever problem, writing, dealing with anxiety, whatever it is. So I want to get my energy flowing. And logosynthesis is a focus on energy instead of stories. And that's why it works so well. 
most of us, even if we're energy psychologists, are looking for the moment in time where the story began. And you're mm -hmm. saying that's not the case with logosynthesis. Dr. Willem Lammers is brilliant. He's a Swiss psychologist uh, born in Holland. He knows so many different methods of healing. About 20 years ago, he was searching. He kept thinking that there's an, there's an easier way. There's a better way. It doesn't have to be so painful. A lot of people in psychotherapy kind of avoid psychotherapy because they're afraid they're going to have to go think about things that are very painful. He thought about that. And he was a Buddhist, you know, had studied Buddhism along with other things, just had all this conglomeration background. And out of that, he was in a situation in which he was called in as a consultant to a patient who was amnesic and very disoriented and had been for a couple of years ever since a incident of a fall. And he spontaneously at one point heard her say something, which is, I'm standing beside my shoes in, Hall, in Dutch, which means I'm sort of dissociated from myself. And he asked her to take her energy back and put herself together again. And she did. And he used some words to do that. And she cried for days, got started remembering what had happened to her and functioning well in the world again. And he was, oh, this, this works. And started working with other professionals about it who helped craft the sentences. So are you going to share them with us now? Could you give us an example that we could use them to proceed with it? say, as a writer or as a human being with stress and anxiety. Let us watch you uh, address these sentences, please. First of all, I would like our audience to get involved. I'd like everybody to think about, think about when there's somebody you don't want to be with and you're imagining what awful thing will happen when they're there. That awful thing is going to be this incident in what I say to you. I'm going to repeat some words. And I'm going to ask, Carol, if I say them, will you say them after me? Yes. I want you to do is not write them down. I know you're a writer. We all wait. To... <laughs> We're all writing. Don't write the words down. <laughs> I will give them to you. Yes, you've there got a link, link at the end, haven't you, where you yeah. go, we can go and download those words. So you, we just must yeah. go through. You want us to go through the exercise. Carry on. That's right. That's right. And I'm going to tell you what the words are first right now. And then we'll go through it. But I, I want you to think about what do you imagine? What's the bad thing you imagine that will happen? As you're thinking about that, think about your distress if that happened. Think about is it like a three, you know, a little bit uncomfortable or is it a 10? My God, I want to run and just get that number. The sentences are, I retrieve all my energy bound up in this incident and I take it to the right place in myself. So you're taking your energy back. The second sentence is, I remove all the energy that's not mine. All I remove all the not me energy involved in this incident from all of my cells, my body, and my personal space. And I send it to where it truly belongs, not to me. And the third sentence is, I retrieve all my energy bound up in all of my reactions to this incident and take it to the right place in myself. So those are the sentences. But in order to use them, they have to be done in pieces. And in this case, I is not the I that controls everything. I, in this case, is that still small voice, that connection with essence, your true self, your higher self, whatever you want to call it. Think about the incident, give it a number, and then say the sentences with me. And I'm going to say them in pieces. Carol will repeat them. You repeat them when Carol does. We'll see what happens. First sentence, I retrieve all my energy. I retrieve all my energy. Bound up in this incident. Bound up in this incident. And I take it to the right place. And I take it to the right place. In myself. In myself. Okay. Now, ordinarily, I would give somebody... 30 seconds, 50 seconds, two minutes to just process that. Just think about it. Just breathe deeply and notice whatever happens. Some people will notice that 
there's a sensation in their body. Some people will notice that they see things. Some people will notice that they hear things. Some people will notice absolutely no change at all. And that's all all right. Just breathe and notice what it is. Now I'm going to give you the second sentence. I remove all of the not me energy. I remove all of the not me energy. Involved in this incident. Involved in this incident. From all of my cells. From all of my cells. From all of my body. From all of my body. And from my personal space. And from my personal space. And I send it. And I send it. To where it truly belongs. To where it truly belongs. Okay. Now, take another few seconds. Breathe. And just notice what's happening. What you think about. What you're feeling. Anything at all. And because we don't have the time to do it here, we'll go on to the third sentence now, which is, I retrieve all of my energy. I retrieve all of my energy. Bound up in all of my reactions. Bound up in all of my reactions. To this incident. To this incident. And I take it to the right place. And I take it to the right place. In myself. In myself. And breathe again and notice what happens. Think about the incident again and see whether you're responding to it in the same way or whether something has changed. I don't know what you were doing, Carol. Did anything change for you there? Yes. And, and to be honest, I, I used this at a time in my life when I was very stricken in, with a codependent situation. And it really has completely transformed me. So I'm so happy that you're sharing it. But even now, a piece comes to you. It feels like you're a bit fragmented before. And as you do this, the pieces come, the energy comes back into you. Some, some people experience that they can't see the picture anymore. They can't imagine it anymore. It's just gone. Yes. First class I was in with this, I had no idea what I was doing. But on the way home, I forgot to be upset about flying. And usually I was upset by the crowds. And, you know, I hated flying. I hated the long trips because it was so exhausting to have all that stuff going on. I forgot all about being upset. I have never remembered since that time, and that was like 11 years ago, to get upset again. And it, it was like, what happened? I didn't know. And then three years later, I found the notes that somebody had taken that I had worked on. And the incident I was thinking about was being crowded in the subway when I was a little girl in New York. So are you saying that we were thinking of a of a person that, but it can bring up, it can be related, but we're not looking for the story of another incident. And as you work with the person as a therapist, saying these sentences, is that what happens? You know, they, 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 it shifts to another memory that's actually frozen in the fear or the stress. Yes. Uh, one, one of my favorite things that, that happened to me when I did that was one day I had a very difficult um, conversation with somebody. And being an expert in conversations and communication, it was disturbing that I couldn't get things organized. And so I kept thinking about it. I just kept going around and going around and going around. I was brushing my teeth. And so I said, oh, I don't need this anymore. I've got logosynthesis. I can use those magic sentences. So I did. And all of a sudden, I'm remembering something I have not remembered in 60 years which is being bullied when I was in fifth grade. Mm -hmm. I even remembered her name, which was Betty. And it was, oh, this guy was bullying me like Betty did. Okay. And so I did the sentences about Betty. Went to bed. Stopped thinking about it. It was great. There's one, there's one thing that relates to your book, Embrace Prosperity, which might interest writers. I mean, you know, obviously this, you, you told how your book flowed much more freely when you use the magic sentences. But I would say that writers, you know, and authors often have issues around money and the stress, financial worries. How do you apply logosynthesis, just generally, not necessarily for writers, to embrace prosperity? Tell us, that's the name of, I think, your latest book. 
That's the name of the book. Uh, there we go. Okay, Resolve Blocks to Experience Abundance. This one I wrote with Dr. Lammers. I want to tell you, logosynthesis can also be used about belief systems that we have. I had been teaching about money and prosperity for about 20 years. And then Dr. Lammers started applying it to logosynthesis. And I thought, wonderful. We can play with this together. I didn't intend to write this book, but I had always kind of had in the back of my mind to do something. And then Dr. Lammers said, well, why didn't you write about my work and your work? And we can get it together. So we did. One of the things when I started a workshop, I would always ask people to think about what their parents, what they'd heard about money in their lifetime, write it, like take a big piece of paper. We had pieces of paper like this and write it with a magic marker and stick it up on the walls. So we had a whole bunch of messages, beliefs that people had about money written up on the walls. And here are some of them, things that people were told about money and that can keep you, that can freeze your energy around money, just like it does around other things. Money burns a hole in your pocket. The rich get richer and the poor get poorer. Uh, you can't win for losing. Money is the root of all evil. So you better not get too much. One way to lose a friend is to learn is to lend him money. Save it for a rainy day. Money doesn't grow on trees. You spend money like it's going out of style. All of those things that we learn when we're children get stuck. Mm. And we don't even think about them. They're just, they're just back there. And so very often we block ourselves, we stop ourselves. And the way you can know you're, you've stopped yourself is you've been taught how to budget. You've been taught how to balance your checkbook. You know that you can get re resources. You know that you could take a step that maybe you're afraid to take, but you don't do it. And you keep saying, you know, I should do this. I should, you know, well, I don't have time. I just, I keep making excuses. I just don't get around to it. It never work anyway. I'm, I'm never, I always mess up. So applying it to the beliefs, how would we use logosynthesis? Just like we had a, an incident here, you think about the incident. You think about what you want to do. And you think, what's blocking me? What, what am I thinking Every time I go for this, like, I'll give you an example that happened just this week. And I am comfortably retired. I have enough money. It doesn't, what, whatever I do isn't going to impact my lifestyle because I've got plenty. My husband said, the symphony is playing this. Do you want to go? And we went to the symphony a week ago and it was fabulous. And I loved it. And immediately was, you've been to the symphony. You're wasting your money. You can't afford to do that. Well, that doesn't have anything to do with the truth. I can't afford to do that. When I take my energy back from the belief, I retrieve my energy from the belief that I don't have enough money to do this, then I feel relief and I go do it. Or I take my energy back from the belief that I can't market my book. I would be pushing it on somebody or selling it to somebody. And that's terrible. There's a belief that selling is terrible. If I take my energy back from that belief, then I can do it. And so we have all kinds of things that get in the way that we don't even think about getting in our way. We think about there's not enough and there's enough. So, so does your book help us un, uh, unpick the, the path to our beliefs and use logosynthesis to clear our blocks to prosperity and, and to, so we can embrace prosperity? It does. One of, one of the exercises in it, it's, it's full of exercises. It's, it's full of activities that people can do to embrace prosperity. That's great. Dr. Lammers came up with this fabulous thing about going on the path to where you want to get to and noticing where the energy blocks are an exercise you can do with yourself or with a friend. And as you notice the energy blocks, you can go back and dissolve them. And we've had people do this, and I didn't know I could do that. That's very so, exciting. Yeah. As we bring this interview to an end, to, to let people know where they can get hold of more of this. The First of all, the three magic sentences. And secondly, uh, you know, I presume your book is readily available. Most of them. And certainly this one. And the previous one about logosynthesis, which is this one, Letting It Go. Okay, great. So there are two books that could help. There are two books that I have written because all the books used to be professional books. And these are very easy to understand. The books are on Amazon. 
They are at Barnes and Noble. Kobo can get them. Any online bookseller. Yes. Okay. And your and, and your gift of the sentences. My gift is a seven day program called Reduce Worry Starting Now. And if you go to my website, which is lauriewise.com, immediately start using that. And if you go through the seven days, on the seventh day, you get the sentences. But the sentences are not useful until you know how to pick out the trigger that is keeping you from doing what you're doing, the trigger to recognize what, where your energy is frozen. And the first few days, and it only takes 10 minutes a day or less. Mm -hmm. And if you want the sentences right away, uh, you can get all of the material all at once. I'll email it to you a little bit at a time, but you can get it all at once. It's all, it's all there for you. So thank yes. you so much, Dr. Laurie. This has been a really enlightening and literally lightening our load of worry and stress and potential problems we might have as writers and embracing prosperity, which is exciting for every one of us listening. Thank you, Carol. It's been great to be here. Thanks for joining me on today's podcast. Want a free gift to inspire you further on your book writing adventure? My free checklist, five book hook tips to kickstart your book writing journey will help you get clarity on the key essentials to make your book a winner. Download it at writethebookinsideyou.com forward slash free gift. The links are in the show notes. Until next time, a big virtual hug and keep writing.